Let's move on to the next question. All right, so the question here is asking us, why does lifting one end of a track lead to constant acceleration? So let's look at uh, what the junior tutor said here. Uh, a straight track can be idealized as a line to help simplify and quantify the thought experiment. So this is question number three. Let me just write that down so I don't forget. So the thought experiment lines are defined mathematically by their slope, its rate of change, or how steep the line is. Lines in mathematics are 2D, have an exponent of 1, and are called linear functions because a line has constant slope. Although the speed or velocity increases as it moves along, it does so at a constant rate, and its graph is that a line is that of a line because its acceleration remains constant. The rate of change of a line is also also constant no matter how high you lift the track. The velocity's graph is a line and its rate of change acceleration is constant. So so this is a a, a good explanation. Um, but let's draw a diagram just to think about what's going on. So if we had some kind of straight track, we had it like this. So we'll say this line is a track and we had some object. So essentially what we're doing with this track is we're lifting this one end. We're just lifting this up. And the object will eventually start moving this way. So the next scenario would be that the track will be at an angle. And then we have the object over here. And then we've, we keep lifting the track and then the object starts sliding down. And here it's asking why does lifting one end of the track lead to constant acceleration? So, you, so to understand why it's constant acceleration, you have to think about what's going on right now. What, what are the forces acting on this object? Why is it moving? So here we note that there's always the force of gravity and then acceleration due to gravity. So we know on this object there's the force Fg, the force of gravity. And then we have the normal force on the object. So we're drawing the FBD, free body diagram. And then we have we might have a friction force or we might have something else here. So the the main thing to note here is um, here for the force of gravity, we'll have a y component here. So if we had a coordinate system like this at an angle, an x and a y, we'd have a y component to the force of gravity and an x component. So this would be fx and fy. So we can see based on this, we know Fy is only um, equalized by the normal force, but here we have Fx, which is the reason why this object is accelerating. So we know F net equals Ma. So this is Newton's second law. Um, and then we can see that this Fx is, only, is not countered by anything unless there is a force of friction. And this Fx is caused by the force of gravity, and the force of gravity is caused by acceleration due to gravity and that's at 9.8 meters per second squared and since this value right here is constant regardless of the situation we know that this force of gravity on the object uh, will be the same and then thus fx causes this object to move um, with constant acceleration due to the constant force of gravity um, of acceleration acting on it so that's kind of uh, a way to conceptualize what's going on to understand why lifting just one end of the track causes this constant acceleration. And this is mainly just due to the force of gravity and the X component acting over here. So we'll mark this as correct. So correct answer, great job. And let's move on to question number four.